the government is not this if this huge colossal machine, if you will. It's it's segregated into these little thiefdoms, if you will. And unfortunately, they don't always coordinate and talk with one another. Uh, as far as these vehicles not being made by, by humans, if you will, that's not me saying that. We have scientists, some of the top scientists that your taxpaying payer dollars have paid for, for them to conduct this research. And at the end of the day, when you're studying the material and you're studying the, the capabilities of these vehicles, and frankly, there's nothing that we have that compares to what these, these vehicles can do, the capabilities that they're demonstrating in front of us, then one has to ask, well, where are they from? And if it's not our technology and it's not some sort of adversarial technology, it's someone's technology. <laughs> okay, y'all, listen. This week is definitely going to be filled with Luis Elizondo promoting his new book, Eminent, that comes out tomorrow. He's clearly going to be doing a lot of interviews and advertising for his new book, just like this. Hey, everybody. I'm Lou Elizondo, author of the book Eminent, The Pentagon's Hunt for UFOs, where you will learn about the decades-long program the U.S. government has had investigating UFOs, and more importantly, what we as a government learned about UFOs. Buckle up and get ready for a wild ride. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be playing you an interview he did on CBS News this morning. So it just came out. Let's take a look. Comments on 60 Minutes by former Pentagon and intelligence official Lou Elizondo put the global spotlight on the government's look into unidentified aerial phenomena, or UAPs. Now Elizondo is sharing more details about his work. He is the author of the new book, Eminent, Inside the Pentagon's Hunt for UFOs. In it, he writes, these crafts are not made by humans, and they present a very serious national security issue. Lou Elizondo joins us first right here on CBS Mornings. Welcome. Thank you. My honor and privilege. Yeah, a lot of people, I think, even if you don't believe in UFOs or you are someone that definitely believes that there is something out there, you talk about this idea of these crafts being created to, quote, be friends from out of town. What makes you so certain that they're not made by humans. And also, if I could, early in your book, you said when governments lie in, to their people, all of democracy is at risk. Do you think the government is lying? Well, we know that the, the, the government never lies, right? Uh, Iran-Contra, Pentagon Papers, uh, Afghanistan withdrawal. No, the, unfortunately, the government is not this, if this huge colossal machine, if you will. It's, it's segregated into these little thiefdoms, if you will. And unfortunately, they don't always coordinate and talk with one another. Uh, as far as these vehicles not being made by, by humans, mm -hmm. if you will, that's not me saying that. We have scientists, some of the top scientists that your taxpaying payer dollars have paid for, for them to conduct this research. And at the end of the day, when you're studying the material and you're studying the, the capabilities of these vehicles, and frankly, there's nothing that we have that compares to what these, these vehicles can do, the capabilities that they're demonstrating in front of us, then one has to ask, well, where are they from? And if it's not our technology and it's not some sort of adversarial technology, it's someone's technology. In, in a statement to CBS News, the Pentagon spokesperson said that the department will follow the data wherever it leads. However, to date, we have not found any credible evidence of extraterrestrial activity. Are there other explanations that should be considered? Is there hard evidence that this is... Um, a non-human technology. That's a, that's a great point. And so I think we need to look at this from a temporal aspect, a time aspect. I think if you were to look at it now and say, well, there's no evidence these things are, are, if you will, not human. The reality is we've been dealing with this topic as a government for decades. So it's not like there's some sort of adversarial technology that just popped on the proverbial radar that's ahead of us. This, this is something we've been dealing with as a nation for 60 years. So let's put that into perspective. This would be like going into King Tut's tomb for the very first time and finding a fully assembled 747 inside the tomb. It, it, it doesn't make sense, right? From a time perspective, we're talking the 1950s, the late 1940s, where this technology has been demonstrated over controlled U.S. airspace, over some of our most sensitive military installations. And by the way, there's U.S., official U.S. documentation that substantiates this. You know what, Lou, I really enjoyed your book. I thought it was really eye-opening about the secrets that people keep. You make a point of saying, you believe secrets have an expiration date. Mm -hmm. And it seems you and your family really went through hell as part of your job, both physically and mentally. 
And at one point, you ended up quitting your job. And your wife said to you, who quits a job without a job? And you said to her, what? <laughs> well, I said to her a lot of things, I'm sure. Uh, at the end of the day, I made the decision to, to leave my job and pursue this topic because it was the right thing to do. And I don't think my family would have respected me uh, if I didn't. You said a man who can't live with himself. That's, that's the line that stood out to me. But why do they want to keep this a secret? And what do you mean that secrets have expiration dates in less than 90 seconds? Sure, less than 90 seconds. Well, um, secrets are, are made to protect two things, sources and methods. They're not designed to stop, if you will, the American people from learning the truth about embarrassing things or trying to hide things. Um, this is a topic where I believe America can handle the truth. And I think America deserves to know the truth about this topic, about your taxpayer money that's been spent over the decades to try to figure out just what the heck is going on. Look, you have former directors of national intelligence, former directors of CIA, and even former presidents all coming out saying, yeah, this is a valid and real topic and a national security issue. Yeah, and I think there's so much information in that book. We so appreciate and wish we had more time, Lou. Lou Elizondo, thank you for coming in. Eminent goes on sale thank tomorrow you. wherever you buy your books. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, okay, these, these quick, you know, news morning shows, look, you really just can't get that much information out, right? Um, but let's be real, it's getting into the mainstream. And you could see how interested the interviewers were, right? They had read this book, they were fascinated by it. And I think we're kind of headed towards that more, right? Where people are taking this way more serious. That entire interview was taking the topic seriously. I don't know what more we want as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, I thought it was a great little little piece for Lou to do and to get out there that reaches millions of people and probably a different audience than say most of us watching this video are, right? So yeah, look at it as a benefit. And that analogy he made, right, about finding a 747 in a tomb kind of makes sense, right? I've heard him say that before, I think, or someone else. I don't know where I heard that before, but I have. Anyway, um, look, I've also got another clip that I want to play for you guys as a little surprise. Um, Luis Elizondo was a guest on Theories of Everything with Kurt Scheimungol, and he got asked a question about an NDA and, you know, releasing this information and that sort of thing, right? If, if, if he has the truth, why can't he just say it, right? And in this, how, how can he make the book, you know, those sorts of things. Now, this was a few years ago, but I thought it was apropos for, you know, him coming out and releasing his book and what information he can talk about exactly. What's classified, what's not classified, how can he put it in the book, right? That sort of thing. So I think this his answer helps you kind of understand where he's coming from and how what a tightrope, you know, balance he has to maintain uh, when it comes to this. So let's take a look. Next question comes from Mick West. I'd like to ask Lou Elizondo, does, I'll just read this verbatim, if he really thinks this is non-human technology that can revolutionize the world and maybe include contact with aliens and extra dimensional beings and so on, why is he so concerned with NDAs, surely for the good of humanity, he should release the evidence that he has. Uh, surely for the good of humanity. And then he can go ahead and pay for my mortgage. He can put my kids through school. He can come visit me every day and give me soup while I'm behind bars, spending the next 40 years of my life, uh, you know, doing a service for, for, for somebody else. I've already put my neck on the line. Uh, so I'll do respect, Mr. West. Um, you know, uh, if, if why don't you, there's nothing stopping you. Why don't you do it? You know, I've, I've already put my career, my, my reputation and credibility on the line. I've already foregone my, my retirement uh, and my pension. How much more else do you expect me to sacrifice? You want me to put myself up on a cross and nail myself to it? Just, just because, you know, I, I think we've come pretty far so far. I think, I think I haven't had to go to jail and we've come pretty damn far in the last three years, you know? So uh, I guess a simple, you're welcome uh, is, is probably, you know, would be my response so there you go y'all this new book comes out tomorrow um august 20th i'll put a link in the description as always check it out and of course any other videos that i've made about luis elizondo i'll put them uh, links down in the description and you can find more there 
Uh, don't forget, y'all, we do have a Discord channel. A link in the description if you want to go join it. We're almost a thousand members strong. Basically, conversation happening 24 7 in there about UFOs and much more. So if you want to join, please join. It's free to join. And you can become a, a VIP vetter, if you will. Um, so anyway, all right, guys, we'll see you on tomorrow's video. Remember, every day is a gift, y'all. Peace! I live inside my own world of make-believe Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watched me weep